How are you doing, folks? So this is my third video in my series on self-designed and built URAC modules. And today I don't have one, but two modules to show you. I have here the envelope generator and the sort of sister module that goes with it typically is the VCA, the voltage controlled oscillator. Now, these are the two modules that will allow you to start crafting your sound and turn it from a simple oscillation to, well, a synth instrument, really. But before we continue, it's tradition now to thank PCBWay for supporting this video. They, of course, offer PCB manufacturing services along with part assembly, but they also have fantastic services like CNC, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding. Meaning what you have there is essentially a one-stop shop for all your DIY projects. So go to PCBWay.com, upload your project files, and get an instant quote. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. So let's start with the envelope generator. What this is, is essentially a controlled voltage generator. It doesn't quite create a sound by itself, but it creates a voltage shape that can be used by another module. If you've ever seen even pictures of a synthesizer, you'll be familiar with the characteristic properties of an envelope. A, D, S, R. Attack decay, sustain, and release. All synthesizers have some form of envelope generation. Some of them tie the decay and the release together like this one. Others have expanded on all these parameters and added more, but essentially most synthesizers, if not all, have some form of envelope generation. What does this all do? Well, uh, like I said, it generates a voltage shape. The attack will inform the module how quickly that shape reaches its maximum voltage. The decay will indicate how quickly after that it reaches the sustain level. And the sustain level means that the signal will stay at that level until you release the signal. So in the case of a synthesizer, until you release the key that you're pressing. And after that, the release takes over and informs how long that signal fades down to zero. Now, there's many uses to an envelope generator. In the world of synthesizers, the first one uh, that comes to mind is actually using this in conjunction with a VCO to actually shape that oscillation that you're getting out of the uh, module. So here, I have a few examples of sound uh, I recorded with a VCO. Um, it's just a simple oscillation, and I want to show you here by zooming. This is essentially your pattern for the oscillation here. If I zoom in this guy, you can see that this pattern here sort of repeats all throughout. And what the envelope does, it will essentially inform how this uh, oscillation is shaped through time. So you have your oscillation, you apply the envelope and the envelope will just shape, give it those uh, nice curves or harsher, shorter. You can actually see the characteristic of the sound here. You can see the attack comes here. There's a little decay here, the sustain and then the release that continues. Uh, very often it's hard to distinguish which is which. In this case, I don't think there's actually a, a sustain. I think it's all release after the decay. Uh, here we've got a much shorter sound, short attack, rather long uh, decay, um, no sustain and very short release. Here's the opposite, a very short attack, um, close to no attack, so the attack is here. Very little sustain, or there's a little bit of sustain and a long decay. So it should be a fast, plucky sound. And here is what happens when you have very long attack. I don't think there's much of a decay, in fact. I think it goes from a long attack straight to a release. And we can see our sound evolve over time. And that's it. That's the essence of using an envelope to shape your oscillation. You just take a standard oscillation and apply your envelope shape to it. Now, the way this works is pretty simple. You essentially take your CV and gate signals out of your keyboard. So the CV signal goes into your VCO. That's what makes the note change. And the gate goes into the gate in of your envelope generator. So every time you press a key, the envelope generator will be triggered. Then you take the audio out from the oscillator and the CV shape that you just created with your envelope generator and connect both into your VCA. 
What the VCA does, it will essentially use the oscillation and amplify it according to the shape of the envelope generator. And really, that's all there is to it. These two modules is essentially what allows you to craft your sound. So the envelope generator itself is pretty simple. There's an attack, a sustain, and the decay and release are tied together. I, along with many other synth manufacturers, wanted to keep things simple, uh, especially when you're starting your journey into synth and synthesis. Uh, so I decided to tie both of them. You'll often find existing synthesizers do the same way. A lot of the Volca stuff uh, does that. Ultimately, it's not entirely necessary to have separate controls for both. So there's a gate in to receive the gate from the keyboard and an out, an inverted out, which is always very handy when you're trying to modify other modules with that gate. I've also added a small switch that will actually loop the envelope. So when the envelope reaches the end of its cycle, it will start over as opposed to waiting for a new key press. Uh, and that can be handy to create a rudimentary LFO, low frequency oscillator, which is another module I'm working on. And, um, on, and also I found that it can create a, a, a handy rudimentary as well, but a practical uh, clock signal. As for the VCA, well, it's pretty simple as well. There's an audio in, there's a CV in, which is receiving input from the envelope, and there's an audio out. Um, and you'll notice this is a double VCA, so there's two separate VCAs with separate entries for each and separate out for each. So you can actually control, well, two different audio signals with uh, one module. As usual, these will be available on my Etsy shop. What I'm providing is the PCB with the surface mounted components already in place. You will need to source the audio connectors, the uh, IDC power connector and the pots uh, from your side. I will put links um, where you can find all these components, uh, different links as well for different regions of the world to make things simple. Again, I recommend AliExpress for all that kind of stuff. It's usually cheaper. You just have to wait a bit longer to get them. And I think all we need to do now is just uh, solder a couple of these quickly and test them. All right, so same as usual, um, we're gonna start with the IDC connector. This is a 16 pin IDC connector. And the way this connects here, you have the uh, silk screen, and we're just gonna align it like this. So the notch is on top and then flip it over like that. Again, if you have any doubt, uh, you see the notch here to the left of it is uh, pin one here, and I've marked uh, pin one here. So we're just gonna align it like that and uh, solder that in place. All right, so that's that in place. Next, we're gonna put the um, jack connectors here. So solder. So we're gonna put the, all these in place at once and then uh, flip the board and we can solder them all at once. The thing you want to watch out for is these two guys here. They're very close. I actually made some extra large pads uh, so that it provides a better mechanical key. But um, uh, make sure that these don't bridge. See, there's a, a, a very thin gap in between. Just make sure these two don't bridge. All right, that's those in place. And last, we're gonna do the uh, three pots. So there's two uh, one mega ohm uh, pot and one 100 kilo ohm pot. Uh, so make sure you insert the right ones at the right place. Right, that's the connections done here. I'm gonna solder these uh, little legs. They're just here to secure the uh, pot to the board so it doesn't wiggle like that. But here, we can. what we can do is take something flat and thin and just bend those legs so they actually clamp onto the board that way. All right, so these are nice and tight and we're gonna solder these pads, to uh, these uh, legs to the pads. They're not connected, they're not part of the circuit. This is actually connected sort of to the ground, but it just provides a mechanical key. You don't need a ton of solder here, just a, a, a tiny little bit will do. I'm just gonna use this to prop my... Uh... So yeah, you don't need a ton of solder here. Um, a tiny little bit will do. It's actually better not to use as much. So you don't need to cover the entire pad with solder. And there you go, that's our module put together and um, we just need to test it now.
So I have here my test box uh, with my four modules that I've uh, made so far. So we've got the VCO, we've got the VCF that we saw uh, the last time, and the envelope and VCA are here. All right, so we got our uh, Arturia keyboard with our uh, pitch and CV. So if I connect the pitch cable uh, straight into our CV in here. So what we'd want to do next is use the gate from our key step and connect that to our envelope here. Um, so this will actually take the gate and now we can use the gate to create our envelope. So this is the attack knob, this is the uh, decay and release, and this is the sustain here. What we need to do now is take the output from our VCO here and patch that. Uh, I'm going to use the sawtooth and send that to our audio in of our VC. I'm trying to do this with one hand. And then I'm going to take the envelope out and send that to our CV, our control voltage in, which is the one on top. And the bottom one is essentially our output. So we can already listen to what's going on uh, right here. If I leave my finger pressed on the key, it still decays, and that's because we don't have set, we haven't set a sustain. So you can hear the attack is instant. The sustain goes to a certain level below that, and then when I release my finger, it continues for a few uh, milliseconds. Really, I'm going to extend that so we can get a, a good idea. So that's it. We've connected our envelope generator to our VCO, VCA, and now we're crafting sound. Um, what I could do here is actually use the third module. We haven't used that, and why not? So uh, I'm going to take the output of that and send it to my filter. And now I'm going to listen to what's going on at the filter end. <laughs> Now, wouldn't that be great if that could be automated? Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the inverted output of our envelope and patch that to our filter. And there you go, folks. This is uh, my well, third and fourth module. With these four modules, the VCO, the filter, the VCA, and the envelope, we now have a working synthesizer, essentially. Uh, one voice synthesizer, but it's it's working, and we can start making sound with this. So I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's uh, purchased the uh, other modules already. Uh, these will be available on the SC shop as you're seeing this video. And... Um, I, I can't wait to hear what you're making with them. Uh, folks, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you soon for more of these.